Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this bracket. Um, so we're, we're going to kind of walk this through the various steps of um, thought process to design, to build, to implementation. Just kind of show you how all the pieces of 3D printing fit together. So one of the big questions you may be asking, what is this for? And as I try attempt to pry it from the bed here, and again, uh, one of the things, if you watched my prior videos on preparing the bed, where I prepared the bed with alcohol, um, this was the result of that, and it stuck pretty well. Also, one of the things that I want to mention is that uh, I'm using the .3 nozzle, and I'm getting a lot of artifacting here, what I'm calling artifacting, you know, or basically cold extrusion. Uh, now I've kicked I've with, with the hot with the Swiss micro Swiss all metal hot end. Uh, one of the things I have discovered both by a actual practice and commentary on um, the videos is you have to kick up the heat. Now I've had to kick up the heat about 10 to 15 degrees on the various prints to keep what I'm what I call cold extrusion from happening. And this is this is sort of it. Um, is I'm having some problems in, in the, the, the early layers uh, of this. So, um, but it's since I switched to the 0.3 millimeter, 0.3, yes, 0.3 millimeter head, I'll spit it out uh, since my 4.0 became clogged. So I'm definitely going to switch back to the 4 um, because I think it does a better job than the 3. I think if you're going to print small, in, you know, the smaller, more intricate parts going to the lower nozzle sizes, I think probably work out better and I want to do some more experimentation. However, I have not been having good luck with the three, the, the point three nozzle size. But that's not about the nozzle size here. I just kind of wanted to share that. So this is a piece I've designed for my CNC router and we'll get to, to how this fits on. But, but before we do that, what I want to do is I want to jump inside the computer. Whoa! Yeah, so much for live TV, breaking my stuff already. So I want to jump inside the computer. Uh, we're going to take a look. I built this in Tinkercad, uh, so I want to show, talk a little bit about it in Tinkercad. Then what I'm going to do is show you an abbreviated fast motion design session where I create this part. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to actually, after we finish that piece, go over to the CNC machine over there and actually install this and see how it all works and, and see a finished product all come together. So. Here it is, you see the product. We're going to look at its, its conceptual creation in Tinkercad and how we went about it. We're going to watch a time lapse of, of one of these printing. I've actually printed out three of these. And then we're going to go over to the machine and actually install it and you'll see how it works and, and why some of the things are the way they are. Because I think this is one of the important things. It's, it, it's all good and fine to go to the Thingiverse, get something, download it. The real power to this gang is I think a lot of you realize is to be able to dream up something and make it. This what really blows me away with, with 3D printing, CNC machining, laser cutting. If you can dream it, you can build it. And you can build some pretty crazy stuff. So anyways, let's hop into the computer and then we'll take a look at it. And then after all that stuff inside the computer, we'll do a time lapse of this printing and then we'll go over to the CNC machine and we'll see you then. Welcome to the machine. Now that we're inside the computer looking at Tinkercad, uh, we just want to show a couple key pieces about this design. As we'll see, this is designed to mount to the Probotic uh, Fireball V90 to hold uh, basically a shield, a, a dust shield, etc. to capture flying parts. So the design is a little bit simplistic as, as one of the things that you see here and you'll see as we go look at it installed on the machine is there are two rails, one with a smaller tube, one with a larger tube here uh, that this will mount into. Now what I've done is I've placed countersunk holes uh, in here where where the screw will pass through this outer opening and hold against this larger inner opening and actually thread into the tubes. The th tubes are PVC basically they're nothing more than PVC plum plumbing pipe that have been painted and uh, so inside you know as you sort of can see here it's tapered so the screw head will be recessed 
so it won't impede this opening here which is where the the acrylic or plexiglass will slide into and so it has two mounting holes now one of the added benefits of this is going to be that it's going to hold uh, there'll be three of these on one side so it, it'll actually interestingly hold the probiotic uh, CNC machine actually a little bit tighter than it does now uh, so that was kind of interesting byproduct the, the center hole is again um, sized to take like a number eight screw so what you do is the outer hole here is bigger than the inner hole inside here um, so I've again tapered this a little bit. There's there's no recessed head in here. It's just a smaller hole in here than it is here. Um, so in other words, the screw won't grab here. The head will hold against this surface, uh, yet the threads will enter in here. And the idea is is to drill out the the plexiglass or the acrylic, and then have have it pressure fit this tighten up against uh, the the plexiglass, and then push against this and um, the screw hold here so in, in other words it's a fairly simple bracket uh, so it, it took a little bit of design thought of how to make it work in sizing now one of the things that you'll see is it doesn't it, it, if i were to bring in say another block and let me change the color of this block uh, so you can see what i'm getting at so if i were to bring this uh, it's early and I can't grab all the buttons there we go so if I bring this against this the, the center piece you'll notice that these do not touch uh, well at least this bottom one and this one barely touches up here and actually if I scooch it back where it should be uh, there'd be a small gap up here because the idea is is to you know the the uh, number one the, the pipes or tubing isn't perfectly square on the machine and this is going to be relatively square so one of the things I had to do was back it off a little bit so it pulled towards the object if that makes sense uh, rather than wrap around the object uh, you know so it could, could conform because the pipes are not perfect so um, this is something to kind of take into account into some of your designs if, if you're doing something like this uh, because if you try to match this around because I did take the calipers measure the diameters of the pipes um, and then when I printed a, a real brief prototype uh, it didn't fit and that's because the pipes are not they're both not square and not uniform enough so this is where I came up with this and what happens is it, it sort of expands a little bit as it pulls into the pipe so anyways um, I think just just an interesting tip so let's go ahead and, and uh, watch kind of a speed review of this being created and then we'll hop back out of the computer and take a look at uh, it being installed and in practical use uh, again I've already got this installed uh, works great very happy with it so uh, again let's uh, watch a time lapse of it being
Welcome back. So uh, we've taken a look at uh, these brackets when we printed them out on the 3D printer on the Watt How. Uh, we took a brief look at designing them in Tinkercad and you know the concepts and then we saw a time lapse of them actually being designed in Tinkercad and now here they are uh, mounted on the machine. So as, as a little bit mentioned in, in the onset video uh, or the onset segment what what we did is put two holes here so this mounts to the two rails of, of the uh, uh, fireball v90 and then this uh, is a number eight screw that taps into the the PLA itself and holds the you know sheet of acrylic in there like that so it actually does work pretty good I've been um, cutting all day long with this and it really does deflect the material back from here into into the the bed area and allows me to vacuum it up you know there's not a lot because I do have the dust collection system however the bit does throw bigger pieces that you know obviously don't get sucked up as part of the dust collection system and there is some fine tuning I have to do however this really works nice it also is a little bit of a safety screen what I am going to do though is I am going to 3d print some corners to go on here um, and I'll do a little bit of video when I when I do that to, to slip on here, not only to protect you know somebody you know from an eye, you know eye impact on the uh, uh, corner, but you know just to make it a little bit more rigid. Again, I haven't had a problem. It's been running all day and been working really good. So, anyways, uh, hope you found this interesting. If you if you get a probiotic or similar CNC machine, um, this is in, in a 3D printer. I mean, this is something you can also make. I could have made these on the CNC itself and then just drilled out the holes, but heck, I got a 3D printer, so why not? So, anyways, if you found this video interesting, hey, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. A lot more of this coming. Cheers. See you in the next video. Click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.